using this tool you can kind of see all the power coming into these lines here that this pressure plate and the infrared sensor both need to be triggered for this to function it splits into two and it opens up both doors so it doesn't matter which pad i'm on they both open so if they fall down the trap and they happen to go this way then they end up having to go back through the gauntlet hey guys welcome back to the channel today we are back playing the front in this episode i plan to cover how to make automatic doors and lighting using sensors and uh, some of the tools and things that we have and i will show you how i wire everything up and how you know i'm currently uh, using everything on my base and uh kind of using it for this this gauntlet and just automating certain things like opening of doors and and stuff like that so let me kind of go over a few things that i've done around the base so in the last episode i kind of went over some of the new additions like this uh helipad basically that i made on top of my vehicle factory and i also made a, a kind of vehicle pad over here so that i could park my my other vehicles on on top of that because i don't have a lot of flat areas to to put my my stuff and so i made a few but um there was an issue with that and the vehicles uh sink through all of the uh surfaces so on either whether it's wood or concrete or whatever uh, the cars you know and trucks and whatever uh, fall through the floors so that's kind of weird that didn't used to do that so I guess that's something new uh, that's happened since the last update and also we did build the uh, what is that thing called the Warhammer and that kind of turned out to be a very expensive waste of time and energy <laughs> <laughs> I kind of feel bad on that episode because I I made this whole big mobile turret thing that I was hoping that we'd just be able to drive around and it would just shoot everything that moved as we uh, kind of drove it around. But uh, apparently it doesn't shoot anything. So I have everything wired up and hooked up, you know, correctly on, on this thing. It has its own generator and power supply. The lights work. Everything's working, but it doesn't shoot. So if it's mounted on there, nothing happens. So I don't know, that's definitely uh, something the devs need to address. And I'm not even really sure why they put this in the game when there are so many issues with like the helicopter and some of the other vehicles that are, that have, you know, kind of bugs and glitches on them and stuff like that, you know, like, like none of the uh, rocket pods show on this helicopter. And sometimes they show underneath the helicopter, uh, just kind of hanging in midair. So that's kind of weird. But, you know, it is nice that the helicopters do actually uh, land on top of the floor surfaces and not fall through like the cars do. So I don't know what the big difference is between those. Um, but then also I have made a few changes where I have re uh, expand or not re, but basically really expanded the the gauntlet uh, as I'm going to start calling it now. And this is for the raids when we run the creature beacon thing over here and and start our little space-time uh, event. I don't know what the thing is actually called, but um, you know, when we run that, I have two mazes now, and they actually kind of merge back into each other depending on what kind of path the uh, the the characters in the game take. And uh, some of them are actually now jumping and doing weird things like that, like they're climbing up on walls and bashing things and destroying stuff. So it's actually stepped up quite a bit on the hardness uh, scale. So I think we are, uh, let me see, let me see what level this thing's at. So we are on round 33. I think um, I've been playing a few rounds kind of off uh, camera as I've been testing everything to see and make sure that these guys are pathing correctly and all that but let me give you a quick tour of everything now I've made some changes to the main base and I, I did replace some floor pieces I was gonna start doing it in metal because that quake guy when he comes he just sits here and just starts destroying stuff really fast and uh, these wood panels are not very strong so the, the metal ones I'm hoping will last longer but I've um, I've added like a little tower over here and I don't know what I'm going to do with that. I was going to put like a windmill thing up or whatever those little things are. Uh, but one of these little wind turbines up on top uh, or use it as like a little beacon thing or something. So I'm not sure 
And then I have this gun uh, loaded back with ammo, and but I only have it targeting flying objects, so they'll ho hopefully take care of those dang birds for me, because I'm too busy looking around at what's going on on the ground that uh, the birds end up flying in my face all the time. I made some tweaks to the roof line. Uh, it had some issues, so I finally figured that out. And then I uh, remade my stairs and added these pillars with a little bit more lighting around the area. And then I put a balcony, but I took down the rails that I had because I couldn't, um, when you're like right up against the rails, you, you, you can't shoot down. See, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like trying to shoot over the rail and it won't let me. And so I ended up removing the rails. I kind of like it with the railing on, on it. It looks nicer, but uh, I can't actually see or shoot when I'm like trying to shoot down. So, um, and then as I've uh, shown in the last video, we added uh, these sensors for the doors and I have this working a lot better now. So, it, of course, as soon as I say that, <laughs> so uh, I don't know why it, it, it lagged out all of a sudden, but, um, but yeah, it, it, it's working pretty good. I guess it still is a little weird. You have to be at just the right speed. Um, and it seems to be okay now but uh but yeah this is what i'm going to show you here in a minute is how i like wire up these little sensors to open up these doors and just kind of like what's going on with all of this because it kind of gets a little crazy and there are all these splitters and and couplers and there are uh, a few other a little bit more advanced components too that i'll show you uh, how to use those too so let's go back out and Kind of do a walkthrough on the maze so i've uh, this is the normal maze and the only thing that i've really done over here is i put down some of these bear traps and i have them to where uh, they stay in front of this because i this may have actually started working i don't know it wasn't working before but i had put some uh some of the poison stuff inside of it and now it's all gone so I don't know, so I figured I would try to stop and hold any creatures that came through and, and see if this thing actually fires off if we get to see it. So that's just kind of a test. These things work really good, these electric traps. Then we kind of go around here, and I have these uh, fire uh, flamethrower things at an angle now. And basically, the idea is when these guys run, they kind of like hug the inside of the wall and then they will kind of come around and they'll be in the path of this longer. If you have it just shooting directly straight like this, they're, they're only in front of it for a brief second and by the time the thing fires, they've already moved past it and they don't actually get hit by it and it just wastes the fuel in it and they never actually get hit unless they just kind of pile up in front of it or something. But, but if you put them at an angle kind of shooting down, then as they run, they're getting fire on their back, you see, and it has a bit of a distance to it. So it'll shoot about this far, and it, you know, it's it's like a it's like a legit flamethrower, and so light up uh, guys you know, a little easier that way. And then I have uh, this trap door. So this is a trap door right here, where they fall onto a double set of spikes. And then I have a, I used to have a, an arrow wall, but now I've replaced it with the, uh, with the electric trap. And I don't know if like, if they're right here, if this thing will fire or if they'll only fire in front of, if they're in front of it. But you know, the arrow wall will actually fire two spaces, um, a distance away, but I don't know if this will. So we'll see if that does anything. For some reason, uh, creatures, you know, some of the players keep falling in here and destroying this foundation. So I want to see if that continues to happen. Then let's run around here. We kind of just, this is kind of basic. We have the, uh, the little spike traps and then we have the little spinny blade meat grinder thing. And then we come up to here and this is where it kind of changes a little bit. So originally you would, they would come through here and then this is the trap door. The, it's called a flip door for some reason. And then they get stuck in these bear traps, and then the flamethrower has a chance to flame them on. And then they, it's just a straight through all these traps. Then they run into arrow walls, a, a, a backup ballista thing. These are not very strong, but I kind of have them because they kind of give me an idea if there's someone over here. Because you can hear them, and they let me know if there's someone in this space. And then I have the electric uh, barbed wire um, things here. 
I think that's what they're called, right? Yeah, bob wire. And they kind of just slow down anyone that comes. And then this is like the super electrifying <laughs> defense area. So I've uh, basically set up a bunch of flamethrowers that are all pointing right at this thing because those uh, raven, you know, a ninja assassin girls, invisible cloaking, whatever they are, uh, keep coming over here and they they keep destroying this thing and it doesn't take but just a few hits from them for some reason and this thing is done so then you then you're actually defeated on the round so I have these flamethrowers uh, firing at an angle kind of in the direction where I've noticed that they've been hanging out but I've also have these pressure plates wired in over here and then what these do is these actually go back over here to this pillar and the pillar has lights on it. It's actually like a light tower. And if I walk backwards, see that? So if there is someone over here and they're like jacking around and they're cloaked or invisible and I can't see them, if I'm all the way up against this, those things are uh, activated. Even if I'm over here, you can see that the light is on and so I know that uh, there is somebody over here and so my plan is to kind of hang out in this spot and then if I'm kind of looking down I have these lights shining in my eyes and then if I'm looking up for whatever reason then I have those lights on top kind of catching my attention you know hopefully that's the idea at least uh, and then let's see uh, if we go back over here so this is the this is this is basically the old um, gauntlet in a sense the old path that they would take but if they come up over here there is a detour where they can actually cross right here and go into all of these little spinny blades and then I put bear traps here to hold them a little longer so they get a few more swipes in front of these uh, little meat grinder things but also there's a secondary route that they can take so wow I jumped so high that's another thing guys like I didn't even catch this but one of the first things you guys should do is go to your talents and just the very first thing just max this safe fall thing out it increases your jump height a lot and you definitely will need that um, I'm gonna go ahead and change the uh, the daytime to a little lighter there we go Oop. Um, so uh, and that is basically you just hit the tilde key and you just want to type in uh, at where at, it's at the very very bottom left corner okay do you see I don't know if you can see that down there you can hit it wait you can hit it again uh, let me see you can hit it again and it kind of shows you some things over here I don't know what all this other skylight real-time reflection whatever I don't know what that is exactly I didn't type that in but um, sometimes it shows other I guess commands that are happening with the game when it loads or whatever but if you just hit the tilde key and you come over here and you just 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 start typing just hit set and then there's a ton of things you can do just set time and then it's a uh, 24 hours so if it's you know you want to do um, you know like uh, eight o'clock it's just eight and if and, and it'll change the time to eight o'clock if you want to go back and hit it again you can just hit the arrow key and it'll pull back up a time and then you can retype in like say 13 for one o'clock because 12 o'clock would be noon and 1300 hours would be one o'clock and so that puts it you know a little bit after noon so that's just a, a little tip um, for you guys uh, if you want to change the time it's available it's not like something you have to turn on in the admin it's always there and uh, and you can you can do all that I mean you can really you know um, load up anything you want in this game uh, regardless uh, by hitting like shift G and shift G will bring up the GM tool which I guess is just I don't know what the uh, general manager tool I don't know what that stands for but I just call it the admin tool so I usually use this to save the world and then you can also use it to like just you know bring in any item that you want in the game you know if you just want to like speed through stuff or or whatever I try not to use this while playing the game just to do it uh, just you know more legit I kind of wish they didn't have that activated as a as a default but it is so uh, so do you know you just have to restrain yourself a bit but yeah so I have two ways that they can come into this area so there's actually three so there's one on that side and then they can come over here and go around there's really they really just kind of takes them back to the same location and then they follow up to this path go through the super meat grinder 
come over here and then there's another path that goes down with the ball things I moved these there was a big tower in the middle before but it was like blocking my view and I want to see more because I have two paths now and they seem to take this one more now and so we go down this way and now they can either go left and go through more meat grinders or they can go uh, this way and get caught in the bear traps and flamethrowers and then here's more bear traps and a flamethrower and then if they go this way they come around and make it far enough one last spike trap uh, kind of a well I need to change this flamethrower it's kind of not really pointing in the right direction so I doubt anyone's gonna get hit with that and then they got one more zappy trap to get electrocuted and then here I have a whole bunch of flamethrowers are all pointing down this direction so there's a trap they get stuck they get hit with this flamethrower they get stuck they get hit with this one and then they come down and they get stuck and get hit with this one and then here this one will just shoot at anything that crosses in front of it and then if they make it here uh then they're like super tough and those little uh raven girls will definitely make it through this because they run so fast that these things don't even activate i think that's why they're able to get through and not get hurt so much but, uh, but yeah, so then they come over here and uh, they'll turn this thing on, hopefully. And I haven't tested all of this really, so I haven't seen this work. So we're going to find out here in a little bit. I'll run the, uh, the gauntlet. But let me go ahead and start a little test piece here on how to do the doors and, uh, and how, you know, to use some of these. Um, splitters and couplers and things like that so let me add a few things let's do i want to just show you guys a basic layout real quick let's get some get a light and then we'll do a pressure plate and i'll put one of these buttons down to do an infrared sensor and uh yeah all right i think i think that's enough for right now i may want to stick a a wall down all right um, so let's uh, let's basically start off with a power source so you're gonna need a power source and what I do now is I've actually removed I had a secondary power source right here and I've now have all my power sources over here so I would make you know when you get into really uh, kind of the higher levels of you know and you're wanting to make all the, the cool stuff and you're at level 40s and 50s and all that then um, make a definitely make a bunch of wind towers kind of space them apart and they will uh, put out more more electricity uh, unless depending on what area you're in um, it kind of depends on how well these generate but mine are generating like 48 to 55 ish sometimes 60 the max is 75 and then I have these generators down over here that are running and ever since the last update, the generator, the fuel lasts forever now. And uh, you don't have to worry about that. I did actually destroy my oil well. I have another one over there that's the small one, but I got rid of the big one and the big uh, dirt thing, or the mine miner, I guess is what it is. And, uh, and I'm gonna move those somewhere else, but I needed the space for the gauntlet. But yeah, so I have all of these um, power generators and they all run into a expander or I mean a, a coupler basically. And so everything runs into it and then what comes out of it using this tool, you can kind of see all the power coming into these lines here. And then coming out is uh, got a thousand, I don't know if that's a thousand watts or a thousand units. I'll just say a thousand units. Not really sure what the heck it is. And then that runs down this line that's, that's uh, for some reason, not not all dance around with the lines, but it is producing power. And then that runs into a, a splitter. And basically, so that's taking power from all of these things and merging it into one line for us. And then that one line comes down into a splitter and then it charges, it splits off and charges each one of these big battery packs. And then from the battery packs, so let's see, I have, so you can see all of these green. So these all go out into the red onto the battery packs. And then battery packs have a green, a green terminal, which is the output. And then the output comes in and then it goes down and goes into another coupler. So it's basically, these are producing power and then this is storing power and it stores a lot more. So 
Uh, this stores like, uh, I don't know, these are not charging yet, but these are over here. I just put these in a minute ago. So um, these are up to 80,000 units of current load, I guess. And they are, why does it say they're not, there we go. Yeah, so for some reason it says they're not producing any power. I don't know why. It's kind of weird. But I know they're getting power. Yeah, because all those things are on. So I don't know, kind of kind of weird. Sometimes it, it glitches out. Do I have the switch off or something? No, that shouldn't matter, right? Okay. Yeah, I don't know. There's still bugs going on with this. <laughs> so, uh, but normally that will say like what the power is. Maybe if I take this off. I don't know, that's weird. It's not saying it's producing any power, but I know it is. So anyway, so the power uh, comes from these batteries, goes into this coupler, which merges all the power from there, and then the output here, which it says is uh, producing, I think, 2,700 uh, units of power, and then uh, I think it's using only 796 units of power. I think that's how that reads. And then we have a switch here where you can just turn everything off. See, everything in the whole place pretty much is turning off and then we can uh, hit the switch turn it back on and then from this switch comes a, a splitter and there's 10 connections on these splitters and the couplers now that's a this is a new thing that they've added uh and so it wouldn't surprise me if these are buggy a little bit because they're new but then from the splitters i have it going to just everything else so i have one of the wires is kind of connecting all of these things and then it's connecting all the electric deals and then i have one wire that comes way over here uh, as I jump to this <laughs> and so this is just another splitter so I have uh, power coming in on this line right here and then power coming out on any of these channels so we're going to use this as our power source because it's connected to all of this power over there so let's go ahead and put down a um, we'll just put down a pressure plate first actually I'm going to put down a light we're going to use this as our um, uh, basically our device that indicates whether everything is working for right now and then this is the pressure plate all right and then we have a let's just do a wall right here okay and um, let's see what else should we add here all right so Let's uh, just look at what we have on the pressure plate. So the pressure plate, wherever, there it is, okay. So here are our connections right here. And so the red is gonna be the input, the green is an output, and then the yellow is your signal. And you want to bring power from this unit here, okay? And you can just kinda of click it. I kinda of keep everything in like a grid format, basically. And then I just uh, run it over and I use the little lines in the wood to kind of line everything up a little bit, make it somewhat nice looking. And then I run that down here to this plate. So now the plate has power. You can see the power kind of dancing around and coming in. And then you can use this to power something else. So if we wanted to, I could put one of these up on this deal here this is a infrared sensor. So let's put it like right there. And then we'll go ahead and just run power to the infrared sensor. And let's take it over here. We're gonna go up, over, and you can rotate these things too. So like if I put that, well, I don't know if you can on a, I think you can, no, can you not? No, it just goes down, Never mind. So uh, I'll just destroy that. Um, but you can rotate this platform so it it always puts the connectors to the left side for some reason so if you're putting it down this way the power connectors will be on the left if you hit the r key it'll rotate it uh, clockwise and then the power connectors will be over here or you hit it one more time it'll be over there and over there it doesn't show you but that's kind of what happens all right so now we have uh get our little wire tool and you'll definitely need um a wiring tool so make sure you get one of those I'm sure you guys have figured that out by now 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 this thing as you step on it will make a signal that will come out of the signal out of this yellow deal 
and you want to run this into either the power or another yellow signal area. And so now when I step on this pad, it will turn that light on, right? So if I had a, uh, like one of the doors here, and let's see if we had a, let's, let's put it, uh, can I turn that around, turn around. Um, oh, I guess I don't have that sensor, that this, this sensor in the, the right location. But let's just say we have a, oops, wrong thing. All right, let's destroy that. Just uh, put a door right click on your mouse and hold it down and then you can select a open wall and put in open wall and then I'm not sure if I have a garage door in here or not or I don't know I call it a garage door but an electric door do I okay so we're gonna hit this thing here and just type in door and just spawn in one electric door okay so here's the electric door and you have to pay attention. See how like the top of this has like little, it, it kind of sticks out right there. And then this side is, is like more flat on the blue. All right. So this is the front, and, but the wires will be on the back side. So when you're placing it, it doesn't really indicate like an arrow or anything. But if you hit R, see how I switched the back. So now the connectors will be on this side. So if I select it and then we select our wiring kit, the little connectors will be on the back side but you see once i put it in you see how this kind of has like a a little piece that sticks out that's kind of like where this thing rolls up into i'm assuming and then this is the connections so we could um instead take our light and disconnect it from here and then run the signal wire out and over and then back to uh the door Let's see, let's just go up this piece here. And then we'll just uh, connect it to the sensor input right here. So it's yellow to yellow, right? But nothing's happening right now because we have to get power to it. So now um, this is where it it's useful to start having splitters and things because everything's gonna need um, some type of power. But see, I have the power running to this thing over here. And so now all my power ports are taken up. I could use this one, but we could use a, a splitter instead to to uh, split the power off and one can go like to the light and one can go to the door. So let me, let me grab one and I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, let's see, let's grab a small one. I should have one here. There's a coupler, there's a splitter. So let's take this one and then these you can put down and something weird too I've noticed like these you can put down on the walls and everything just fine but if you get the the one that has uh, 10 outputs on it like this one here and you put it it won't go on the walls but it'll go on the floor it it used to go on the walls but now it doesn't so I don't know it doesn't matter what kind of wall I mean you can put it on top of rails you know like the railing but you can't put it like on the surface anymore it's very weird like look at that I could put it on I don't know it's just odd so keep that in mind um you know when you're planning things out i try to do everything on the floor anyway and make a little spot for that just because it's easier all right so this is the only direction i can put it i can't hit r to rotate it but once you select it you can you hit the key once and then it locks it there and then you can rotate it so now you can rotate and you can uh you know adjust it however you want so i'll put it down like that and then i'm going to hit this uh key and we're going to disconnect this and just hit destroy hopefully yeah be careful that you don't destroy the foundation make sure you're selecting the wire sometimes it gets confusing uh, and then what I'll do is I'll run the signal wire out and over and then into the splitter and then now we can run from the splitter uh, out to the light and so now that still works and then we can run from the splitter over to the uh, garage door like this okay and then now we need to get power so we could just pull power from this line right here so we can come down and let's just run power this way you can cross the wires and stuff like that and then now you can come over here and connect power up 
And you see how that's working now? So now when I step on the pad, it opens the door. And then I run off the pad, it closes the door. And then over here, nothing happens when I cross this beam, right? So we, we can add a, a solution for that here in a second so that you can have a beam working or this working or whatever. But right now we have a signal uh, coming in to from this panel going out like here and then over to this coupler, I mean a splitter. And then one is powering the light and one is powering the door. And then you can walk through the door like that. And then you just put another panel on this side and uh, you'll need to run your your output of the signal into a, uh, a another splitter and coupler setup. So let's pretend that this laser right here, this little infrared sensor, is the other side of the door, right? And um, and if we want that to activate the door also, and this activates the door then we have to you know uh, split the signal wire kind of so <laughs> so let me show you like what that looks like um so basically we're gonna take a coupler let's see if we find it over here all right let's put that down and let's take the coupler here and what we'll do is um uh, we already have a splitter there, so really all we need is the coupler, I think, right? So, put that down. It gets a little confusing when you're doing all this stuff, so I'm going to disable this, this splitter. I mean, this uh, uh, signal wire. Okay, and then we have a signal wire from here. Alright, so now what's happening is I can run a signal wire down from the laser over to the coupler right so it takes three inputs and makes one output and then uh, i can do the same thing over here like this and then we'll run this down into the coupler and then see what we're doing so now we have the signals we're running multiple signals from two different sources we could do three if we wanted to it goes into the coupler and then it'll come from the coupler and then we'll go out to the input now and so now this will split the signal and open up you know a, a turn on the light and then open the door or if you have two doors like I do over there see how I have two doors um, it will open up you can have it make it to where it opens up both doors at the same time or whatever you want you can do other things so hopefully it'll add more uh, items in the game you know it'd be nice to have different kind of walls that open up I'm gonna change the uh, time again let's make the time like uh, 12 so you guys can see a little better all right so now when I cross the beam it turns the light on and it opens the door see so if I had a beam running on this side then as soon as I cross that beam it opens the door now it's real fast the beam is kind of like you know it it it, it, it it's in, I guess as soon as you cross it whether the door is halfway open or not it'll instantly close so it's a little, um, I don't know, more sensitive, I guess, based on the width of whatever it's whatever's crossing it. But I find that the pad works better, but if you don't have room for the pad, then the laser beam seems to be, or the infrared sensor seems to be a good idea. Because here I can run through and still, well, kind of still make it, I guess I'm running. But if I had the pad closer, it would, I'll be able to get through. But yeah, see now the pad works, and then I come off the pad and then the laser beam works right and or, I keep saying laser beam but the uh, infrared thing uh, is works as far as turning all that on so you can see those come on and then kind of what that looks like over here give you guys an idea is I have power coming from that same little spot runs over here powers up these pads and then I step on it and it opens up both doors and then each one of these pads there's another set of pads here so these are uh, in you know these are exit pads and then you have your enter pads so, so you can enter the, the facility and this is like my little vehicle factory and I've even expanded this a little bit but you can see uh, I have all of these coming in to a coupler and so that coupler then feeds up to a, uh, 
a splitter so we have input coming in and then it it splits into two and it opens up both doors so it doesn't matter which pad I'm on they both open and you can make it open one at a time or whatever you want to do so that's kind of what that what that looks like and you see this works much nicer when you're crossing through the doors you don't have any any issues with the doors closing on you like the like you do with the the infrared sensors the infrared sensors like I have over here wow, I'm jumping so high um, let me go over here because this was a little more complex at first just trying to figure it all out so I have these this sensor here and just ignore that that's just a power thing but you know it works pretty good um, but it took a while to figure out I have power coming into a, a coupler and then it goes up here to a splitter and does essentially the same thing but it's running off these sensors and you kind of have to have them at a certain distance um, if you have them too far then the doors close too fast on you and if you have them too close then you have to sit there and wait for them to open and it, you know so I'm gonna end up replacing these with pads so that's why I, I fixed my my stairs I used to have double stairs right here and they went straight to the doors so now I've uh, extended out a little pad here so I can put down the, the the little pressure plates instead and use those I like those better so let's come over here and goodness gracious um, and that's essentially what's happening over here on these pressure plates too it's the same thing although it looks like it's a bit more of a mess um, yeah you know, it's mainly because I have uh, a lot of power coming in and running all of these uh, flamethrowers and they're also running uh, the pressure plates so and I have three pressure pressure plates so they just all turn on that those lights right there so once I come off of this that light goes off that's the only purpose those things have right now just as a uh, like a warning to me I hope um, but yeah and then also you can have uh, a few other things so if you didn't want to let's see um, we have that there are other devices here so we have um, a circuit breaker so this thing real quick is just a, a circuit breaker deal so that has an arrow on it you can see it's, it's pointing to the left and that's the flow of the power so if I wanted to I could you know um, just disconnect that and uh, you know matter actually let me let me do this let's uh, let's let's disconnect this uh, this light and let's just put this light into this thing here and then we'll run this over and connect it back to the splitter and then from the splitter there we go okay so now when I cross the beam the lights not turning on see that so the light is not on no matter what happens whether I cross the beam or step on the pad but if I flick the switch now the light has uh, it allows current to go through so I use this switch to turn off you know things so that my batteries can have a chance to uh, to refill on their on juice and stuff like that so <laughs> um, so that's one one way you can use the switch is to turn certain things on and off uh, so that you're not wasting um, power I guess and all that so let's look at this other thing this one's kind of neat this is a uh, like a button you know it, it, but it has a time delay and so if we put this here and let's uh, let's see what let's just put this by itself I need some power though so I have power coming in over here let's use the power off the door okay so I'm gonna just put this button like right here okay so there's the button now obviously you can uh, if if we disconnect this door let's just do this real quick um, is that the power no all right so let's disconnect the door and all right so the only thing we have coming to the door is power and uh, I know it's a little confusing so let me remove this line real quick okay so if you don't have any power coming through these doors you just hit F it just opens the door like normal then you can hit F again it closes the door you know it, it just acts like a regular door um, but you can be uh, a little different where 
you use some power coming in. Let's uh, let's take the power from this thing here, and let's just wrap this around over here. And I'm just gonna run it up on top. Uh, let's see, yeah, let's run power to there, and then let's run the power. Each one of the devices have an inlet and an outlet of power, basically. So they have an input and output. And then we're going to run the power from the door into this button. And then we're going to take the signal from the button. And and it's not called a button, but it's just called a contact switch. But it's basically a button. And then we're going to run this up here. And then we're going to run it over to the signal. So now, if I don't do anything, and if I hit F nothing happens the door doesn't open but if you press the button it opens the door see that and then it closes so i don't know what use this thing is you know it has a bit of a delay to it so if we were to run you know that uh let's take this light and if we were to disconnect the signal from the door instead and have it run like a light like over here uh, if we press the button now see it kind of ha it turns the light on for a bit of time but it's not long enough to really go through the door and I don't know exactly what that's used for so you just hit F and it's it's just like a switch so but it doesn't stay on so it just only it has a little like a you know two second time delay or something or one second time delay and I'm not really sure what we'd use that for. And you can't like press it or walk on it. It's not like a pressure thing. So I don't really know. It's kind of kind of strange. Um, then another thing that we could do over here. So let's uh, let's get rid of the switch right now and get rid of that wire. Let's disconnect that. Then we're going to disconnect this wire. Uh, next to having like these couplers, they also have in the game um, the gates. So they have an OR gate, a NOT gate, and an AND gate. <laughs> so let's uh, let's place each one of these down. Um, all right. So I think this is the AND gate, and these also rotate, so you can rotate them. And then we have I think this is the OR gate, and this is the uh, not gate or something, right? Oh no, it's I have it backwards. Wait. Oh, did I not? I put down the same ones. I thought I was hitting the key. All right, let's do that again. All right, so let's hit seven. I didn't even know I had that many of those. All right, and then six. Okay, so those should be. Are those two different colors? Can't tell because they all start out red until they do their thing. Yeah, okay, now they're changing. All right, so these are a little different. Um, these are for doing like, you know, more complicated uh, wiring setups, you know, where you can use like if-then statements or something like that. So you can say like, if this door is open and someone's sitting on this pad, you know, you can make it do something if the conditions are right. So this one is the AND gate. So basically, uh, this would be like if this pad and that laser are both tripped, at th then this thing will will open. And this one is OR. No, that's not. Never mind. This one's the OR gate. And so it's, this one is basically if this pad is pressed and it's connected, or this pad is pressed, or, or this wire uh, infrared has been beam has been broken uh then the, it will uh send power out or the signal out to where it needs to go so let's see let's see if we can make that work um let's take our light and i want to put these into a let's put these into a coupler actually right and let's see what kind of condition. So we don't have to keep wiring up the same light. So we'll just run these over. Okay. And then, yeah, that is the coupler. 
And then we'll just run each one of these to here, to there, right? Okay, so for this to, and then let's get rid of this. I'm gonna get rid of that too. Uh, all right, and then let's move this beam. I don't know, do I have another one of those? Let's see. That might've been my last one. Um, okay, we'll just have to do in infrared. Okay, so if we put down an infrared sensor here, like let's put it like right there. Okay, give you an idea what's going on with this. Okay, so that has power. We need to get power to this sensor. Okay. Now these things right here are not really, um, you don't need to put power to them. They're really only handling the signals. So anything with a yellow, that's a signal coming out. So this one is, all right, so we're gonna do the AND gate. Okay, so this is the AND gate. Um, so that means two things need to happen, right? That means that something and something else needs to happen. So that means that this pressure plate and the infrared sensor both need to be triggered for this to function. Let's see if that's true. So uh, let's see if that light turns on. Okay, so that light is not turning on. Okay, as I cross the beam, and then if I step on this pressure plate, the light is not turning on. But if I step on the pressure plate and the, the, the uh, infrared sensor, the light turns on. See, so you can use this to get a lot more complicated um, with your with your uh, layout of how you want things to to activate or deactivate. But the uh, the only thing with that is that there's not a lot in this game right now that takes advantage of using <laughs> this kind of stuff. You know, it'd be kind of cool like if we had like some weapons that would be like if somebody crossed this beam and stepped on this plate then that gun would start firing at them or something like that and you could kind of do that but it automatically does it so if it wasn't automatic then you know i'd see a use for this but maybe they'll incorporate some more things like that but see that's how that that's how that works all right so that's that's the end so that means two conditions have to happen and have to be met for the signal to continue to pass and activate the item. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, let's take this and disable that, and we'll disable this one. All right, and now now this one is the not gate, and this one's the or gate. So this one would just be like a regular switch, basically. Uh, so if we run this in to here, into the or gate, it's gonna be either or, it's either or. It's it's something happens or something else happens and uh, it will activate the light. So if I run in this beam, it activates the light. Or if I step on this pad, it activates the light. So you see how that's working? Uh, so that's pretty pretty easy. That just makes it like a basically a regular uh, you know type of splitter in a sense, you know, but it just doesn't it doesn't need anything extra, I guess. I mean, it, neither does a splitter, but I, I don't know. It's kind of, you know, I guess for more complicated things. Uh, and then if we come over here to uh, the not gate. So let's see. So that is going to be where um, basically the opposite of the of the or gate. So if we take that, disconnect that, and disconnect this one. So this one is a little different input signal all right so this one has to have a signal coming in so here's our signal and I'm not sure so that's the not so that would be if uh, so nothing's happening I think that's going to allow power to come through because it's red so basically I guess what it's saying let's see here if that is let's hook it up I'm not even really sure the not one is a little different okay 
All right, yeah, okay, so it's the opposite. Basically, it's saying if uh, no signal is coming in on here, then power will continue to go through. There we go. So, so basically, no one's standing on this pad, and so no power is, no signal is being received. And so it's not receiving any signal. And if it's not receiving a signal, then power is allowed to go through. But as soon as it receives a signal, then it actually turns the power off. And so that could be used to, maybe if someone's standing here to close doors or something, you know, or to turn off the lights or whatever. Um, so maybe, maybe you have like a beacon and you have a bunch of doors around it. And if someone, a bad guy comes in or whatever, and he crosses these panels, then the doors will all close because they're not receiving power and they'll just shut. So that could be one way to use that, you know? So I hope that makes sense. Uh, so yeah, let's use this and do a little practical thing with one of the doors. And now that I've kind of covered, I think that's most of the items in here. There, there are a few other things. Um, you know, obviously you have a, a, a larger expander and a larger splitter. That's all that is. Uh, there is a, a signal receiver and a remote switch, which I don't really know how to use those. They take things and there's also timers and stuff like that. Um, they, there's really not a lot to use those for right now that I can, that I can see. Maybe if you have some, you guys have some ideas or suggestions, then let me know what I could do with some of the other, uh, electric components and we will, um, experiment with that. I'm going to change the time again. So we're going to go into here. And so I have a door over here that I need to wire up. Look at the little flowers. <laughs> uh, so we need to get power over here and let's make a, uh, we really just need, so we need a plate. All right. So what I'm going to do, like I said, the plate will have its, uh, power connectors to the left. So if I hit R one time, it's going to put the power connectors at the, at the front, not, not in front of me, but in front of the door. So I put it down and we look, so the power connectors are right here. And then uh, we come back over here and we do the same thing. We want an entrance and an exit. All right, line this up really nicely like that. And we're going to hit R one time and then check. Yeah, so everything's right there. Okay, so now we just need to get power to these and have these go to a signal. So these are going to go to a splitter. So let's grab, I think two is our splitter. So we'll have them go in like this. Yeah, is that the splitter? Yes, okay. So now we'll have the wire come out, go this way, onto the wall. Let's see, I like to make everything nice and straight. Oh, oh, what? Oh, I'm in a coupler. I put a splitter up. Dang it. <laughs> it's, it gets confusing because they look the same. So, all right, so we're going to take that and we're going to spin it around that way. All right, and then we're going to come do that again. All right, and I find that if you connect these wires and you kind of like connect it on the floor and then run it to the wall, make another connection point, it makes for a nice clean connection because that's sometimes it'll just glitch into the wall and I don't really like that. Um, so then we'll just come here and then up. So there is one uh, signal. Then we'll grab the other signal, come this way, go to the wall, and then just kind of go over like that. Doesn't have to be super perfect. And then we need to get some power. So let's grab some power from over here. I think this is the power coming in. Is that right? Uh, expander. I gotta look and see where all the power is coming in. Um, that's going up. Oh no, that's that's an expander. Where is? I need some power. Uh, okay, I guess I wanted to take it from right here. So let's take the power. We're just gonna run it all the way down the wall here and over let's run it like this 
and then straight down the ground and then we'll just run uh, run it to here to there and then from here directly across to there and now we have power and signals being pumped out so that is all working and so now we just need to take the signal wire coming over here to the door and so the signal is working and now we need to take one last power line and let's just stick it like right here and let's run the power directly to the door there we go so there it is so now you walk on to the pad and it opens the door and you can walk through it and then you're on this pad the door stays open so you move off of it and now you can go through so we have a working uh, little setup now so that's pretty you know pretty much it it's pretty simple the pressure plates are definitely easier to work with than the beam over here you know if you're dealing with this beam that's a little little bit more of a issue to deal with because you know how much time it takes to uh, turn it on and off I guess you know it, it's it comes on fast what happened my computer froze up for a second um, so you can double check make sure my computer does that I like to double check and make sure that no messages have popped up on my screen okay yeah, it looks like it's good so let's go ahead and run the gauntlet now and just see what happens um, I need to load up my weapons and I'm just gonna put these two weapons in right now let's get some ammo going I have enough for a round or two all right so now let's go over here and just see how this gauntlet now forms and see if we can get this thing to detect uh, anyone coming up to it so let's hit E and let's see if we're getting error messages hey it worked I'm so happy that it's working so much better now all right wow oh that bird got knocked out of the sky that's what I'm hoping for these guys just come out and they just start running at things oh we got a little leapfrog dude got a couple of those where is he going is he gonna jump up here oh that's gonna be weird they jump really high where's he going is he going straight because they can jump wow the birds are getting knocked out of the sky okay there there's one he's just sitting there another guy's walking around over there these guys are getting further holy cow all right see he's stuck in that he's stuck and the flamethrowers see that flamethrowers are getting him. got him why do they make girl sounds? It does not look like a girl. It's a weird kind of sound. All right, let's run over here. See that dude, he just fell down in here and ran. So this has actually killed a few animals. All right, so we have the birds are coming. Are they getting, oh, they're getting taken care of, good. They're not catching on fire and stuff, that's crazy. So I think we got a big, oh, they're going this way now. Falling down that hole. Ooh, what in the world is happening? And they're getting hit there, so that's doing its job. And then they have to go all the way back around the gauntlet. So if they fall down the trap and they happen to go this way, then they end up having to go back through the gauntlet. Wow, what the heck? Now, see this dude? That guy, he's always destroying stuff. That guy and the quake guy. It's getting loud over here. Are we getting out? Are dudes getting far over here? Oh my gosh. Nobody's made it over here. Okay, there's there's the uh, raven girl oh she got hit by that thank goodness all right so those have a bit of a delay like a charge build up so he's stuck and he's getting flamethrower see that and he's about to, he's not gonna make it so where we got we got 76 enemies left now they say they now prefer going that route but they're getting all hit by all the extra stuff the the little bear claw or bear traps are, are doing their job. They're falling down the, the trap door and they're getting double whammied and having to go back around. So that's good. 
I haven't seen any new characters yet, besides the jumpy guy. He's the latest addition that's been coming in. And then all the all the uh, other lesser NPCs now have weapons. So they're definitely stronger. And then there's that demon dude, that cliff demon guy. So let's see if we can make this. Oh, there's that assassin girl. So is she going to make it through? I'm going to watch her. Uh, let's see. Nope, she didn't make it. Oh. Hi there. Hey, he didn't make it. This guy right here. That guy? He's, he's not very um, tough. But, you know, like he's not like super strong like with health. But he does a lot of damage when he attacks things. So you have to watch out for your stuff because he'll sit on top of like your you know electric fence things or whatever i mean your electric traps and just sit there from the top and not get injured and just sit there and destroy things from the top down so i mean he is called a, a cliff demon so i assume he's on the cliffs and stuff i haven't i don't think i've seen them in the game anywhere i've only seen them here if i remember right um i've seen the jumpers i've seen the quake guy and then there's the gas dude and then there's the uh the you know all the rocket guys that are at the at the bases and stuff so i don't know if those guys will start you know doing things and you know also if you guys noticed like that thing is totally activated didn't do a thing all these people ran right in front of it not one shot didn't do anything i mean it's fully loaded with ammunition it's got its own generator the light's still on so i know it's working so that's crazy so yeah, I think we're doing pretty good. They're getting uh, up to this point right here. I think I don't think they've gotten any further than that. So we didn't even get to see this being tested. Uh, but it does work when I walk on it. So I'm curious, you know, we'll have to run some more rounds and see how it goes, you know. Um, but yeah, so far I, I think it uh, it's working pretty good. Not having on any more pathing issues. I think opening up a second path like a secondary gauntlet has helped out but they do still go through this too you know they i mean you can if we go over here and look oh the cow is gonna hurt uh so if we go through you know that activate but you can see someone got caught up here but see look look at they they died right here from this i guess so let me look yeah it's used up some stuff i have a ton of stuff in here so i, I just put some like a million in here i just spawned it in because i didn't know but it did actually use up four things but i didn't see it do anything like it doesn't make like a big green cloud or anything so i guess it is actually working now for the longest time it didn't do anything like i would just leave the poison stuff in it and it wouldn't go away uh but yeah you can see people are coming through and someone actually made it all the way around this way and then uh we had a lot of people come in right here and fall through the trap door, get double spiked and then electrocuted. And so they, you know, they, now you guys always say I just hit F key, just tap it. See, I'm just tapping it. See, nothing, it doesn't open these bags. Like you guys are saying, like just, you hit the F key and it opens. I know like it works for other people, but I have to hold it down and then I can look at it and open it up. So the only thing I'm looking for is an exotic sniper rifle. That is like the thing. And then more talent books. Because I think I, I'm almost maxed out on all my talents. Um, but uh, yeah, so they, you know, they're actually making it around the normal, the old, you know, method of going through the gauntlet. And then the, they're coming all the way up to here. So they are uh, still using this side of the gauntlet. And taking advantage of both sides i've even seen someone actually go around because i have this door right here where they can fall off and and go back through the gauntlet again but even if they come up and go through this way what uh they were doing is they were coming up here making it all the way around and they were coming down this last stretch and then instead of going to the beacon they would just go this way <laughs> so i don't know it was kind of weird but yeah, it, it's uh, it's interesting how they um, path around this maze. Wow, that's a lot of stuff. So there's a lot of death happening in this spot. There's all kinds of stuff in here. There's not anything I need though. I'm really looking for upper tier stuff. I'll take that hamburger and eat that though. Um, 
But yeah, so it seems like, you know, this does, this area here does pretty good. Now, I thought I had a meat grinder over here, but no, maybe I didn't. I think I was planning on putting one over here, I think. Um, so I don't know. But one thing that's not happening is that they are not going this way. So they used to go around my whole base and come around on the backside and try to destroy things and do weird stuff like that. So that is not happening, happening, and they are coming around. Yeah, so we're getting lots of stuff from these guys right here. This is apparently a big spot where uh, lots of death stuff is happening. I'm not going to collect all this. I know it probably drives you guys tra crazy. Because I can recycle. This is what I'm looking for. So legendary and exotic stuff. I think I have all that though. Um, but the only thing I really worry about collecting are the shards and the, the uh, talent books. Um, just so that I can max out all of the talent stuff. So, yeah, it seems like they're going both directions here. So they're going this way and this way. And this thing is definitely working right here. There's a sniper. Oh, no, it's a bandit. Um, so this is working out really nice. I'm glad to see that uh, functioning the way it should. And I really wish, you know, they, they would add some more things that we can do. Um, like a like a big swinging blade or something that is activated by the pressure plate. So the only thing I know to do with the pressure plate is use it for doors and stuff right now. And maybe if we wanted to block off an entrance, you know, like maybe one of the paths, I could use it to close a door, you know, and make all the guys go back through the gauntlet again and have to turn around. So, I mean, that's something that maybe I could do and see if it works but you know so far uh, seems like it's functioning pretty good so yeah um, I don't know well anyway I'm gonna end the, the uh, video here and you guys let me know what you think about the how-to on the how to use the pressure plates and the you know electrical wiring stuff and you know all the various uh, components and all that and let me know what you think and if you have any ideas on what I could do uh, other than just open doors and stuff I'd be glad to, to try that out and you know try out your suggestions and stuff but uh, yeah just let me know what you think and uh, you know what else else I could do with it and if you guys know how to get that thing working that'd be great I don't know but uh, anyway I'm gonna end the video here I really appreciate you guys uh, checking out the video and if you like this content please like it and all that that would really help me out and uh, subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this as I plan on just kind of covering some more of the build details in you know every couple of episodes or you know stuff so we'll do some base attacks and I'll build onto the gauntlet and then I'll go over some how-to stuff you know and uh, especially like building the helipad and flying helicopters I kind of did a video on that but, uh, you know, I could probably expand on that a little bit and show you guys how I made this little helipad because it is, that's actually very helpful. I, I, I'm like, wow, that, that really made a big difference. And so I'm able to store everything there. Um, but anyway, uh, I guess I'll end it here and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks.